projectile towards the ground. The startup may be slow, but it creates an opportunity to approach the opponent once out. Try using this bow, but it creates an opportunity to approach the opponent. Ah, oh, I just stand heavy. The startup may be slow, but it creates an opportunity to approach the opponent. Hmm, this landing recovery is pretty low on that. Follow up to Fujin where Anji jumps up and launch. But then again, I don't even think he's at plus. Just hit heavy slash, cause it's back up off of that. I do think though, based on where that shit hit, probably just instant block attack at the plus one. Cause that's not real lockdown. He's definitely seemingly plus. <clears throat> Let me just backdash that. Let me just backdash the fireball in general. Cause he has to go through Fujin anyway. So he's still gonna lose in some of the same similar fashions. It just depends on how fast the options are. Cause if he does Fujin, you block Fujin. Depending on the block zone, you just jump. Cause it depends on how how fast the fall the low follow up is to catch your jump. Cause yeah, that's hop. And hop is. I swear, this dude literally came in with a good chunk of his options remaining from the older games. And he gained the freaking bike and parry. Look at this again. Mm. So. Fujin. Fujin Nageha. Fujin Nageha. Let me see if this. Fujin block. To Nageha. Nageha is fast, so you probably couldn't jump it. So your goal at that point is to either... So they made Nageha fast so you couldn't jump away from it. But you could instant block Fujin and backdash back then. So you probably like... If it does 5k sweep, you can anticipate Fujin. So at that point... You can just probably... IBFD him out on Fujin and then force him to fireball or hop. If he hops, he'll she should get punished. If he does fireball, you'd be so far away it won't matter if he did fireball or not, and just a big neutral return. Then again, he can adjust his Fujin to blow you up. But I don't think you probably want to go for another. Well, then again, if you hold Fujin, you get the spin. So they made it so if you if people wanted to contest you, you could hold. It's a low attack that cannot be blocked while standing. Its quick startup allows a combo off a hit from Fuji. Green, a follow up to Fuji, where Anji performs an overhead attack that knocks the opponent down on hit. The opponent will not be able to block. Them. So since Nageha is fast, Rin Rin seems faster. Um. Just putting it together, I feel like Rin is probably still gonna die to lows. Well, you have to react to it, most likely. Overhead attack that knocks the opponent down on hit. But it's still pretty slow. So you can't go mid. You have to come into the 2K 2D at that point. But I still feel like if you you might be able to IB Fuji to throw him. Follow up to Fuji. Where Anji because Rin is slow. Nageha is fast. A follow up to Fuji, where hmm. You probably couldn't. I don't know if you could IBFD OS into throw. Because I can see it where you would IB Fujin. And if he goes for Rin, you should throw. Maybe go for double IB, throw. So IB, IB, throw. So IB, delay, IB, throw. So, de no. 
IB, delay, throw IB. But then again, you couldn't, you might not be able to commit. Like, you, hmm. Because there should be enough of a time for you to be able to snatch him up before Nageha comes out. Well, not not bad. Rin. Because Rin is definitely slow. And if you IB Fujin, you can most likely throw him. Uh, on an IB. If you, if you miss the IB, you can probably challenge with 2K. 2k 2d to disrespect the the rin but i think to play it safe would be to ib the try to ib throw ib so ib throw ib of course you'd have to like ib four throw but you know that's just if the block stun is too long then you shouldn't get the throw because rin should be slow enough to like get it you should be able to get the throw almost for certain Looking at how slow that move is, yeah, I could totally see that being a thing. Mm, I'll keep doing some break. I'll, I'll keep looking at this. Maybe we'll just upload this instead of me going back through it later. Anji performs an overhead attack that knocks the opponent down on hit. The opponent will not be able to block the move while crouching. You can mm, keep see. the opponent guessing by pop. The opponent what makes what makes this scary, honestly. Hand. It's quick startup allows it to cobble off a hit from Fuji. Nagiha causes ground tech. Tech roll? So. Use this move to take the opponent by surprise Stop it, doggy. when they are concentrated mm -hmm. on blocking. Nagiha. A follow up to Fuji where. Un so you get the tech roll away. So, in the grand scheme of things, looking at the neutral return from Nagiha, if that's the spacing that he's gonna get. That's probably going to be his combo ender in general. But like if he's doing that in pressure to try to mix you up between Nageha and Rin. I think you're better off if you had to pick the lesser of two evils. I think taking the Nageha is like okay. Unless he has meter. Then it'll probably be scary. Because then he can just make that 50-50 a little bit more potent. But. Mm, I don't know. I don't see. <laughs> It seems to be the exact same as it was before. So yeah, if that's his, if that's his return, then I don't know. Based on the tech roll, he might be able to dash it for a meaty. Definitely no jumps. That'd be a free back dash, probably no air dash. So he has to run up on you. All those options I mentioned before are too slow. Forms a low sweep with a small opening. It is a low attack that cannot be blocked while standing. It's quick startup allows it to combo off a hit from Fuji. And then Fujin delay. Because the thing is, I'm pretty sure Nagaha is really off a hit from Fuji. I'm pretty sure Nagaha is unsafe on block like it was before. Fuji. So if it's unsafe on block like it was before, it because it looks like it's got hella recovery. Combo off a hit from Fuji. It's quick startup If he delays to too long, from Fuji. Green. then I feel but like. Cannot be blocked while standing. It's yeah, so like. You can disrespect him there. If he does Fujin and does like a delay like follow up, then buffering the 2k 2d is like warranted. I, don't know, I feel like there's a lot of defensive options to like stop Fujin. It seems like it's just the way it was before. It's not looking like it's too much different, to be honest. Mmm, so yeah. A quick Nagaha will probably get him punished. Cause I'm sure that's not safe. Uh, let me go back to something here. They show butterfly. Float up on contact with the opponent, changing its trajectory. Due to its slow startup, it is best used when you have the advantage. So he gets mm -hmm. into Hakumi. The advantage. This won't Due be. It, it will float up on contact. Shitsu. A slow moving butterfly projectile that travels forward. It will float up on contact with the opponent, changing its trajectory. There's enough time for you to challenge. Due to its slow startup, it is best used when you have the advantage. Yeah, there's enough time for you to challenge. But that's if you want to. Hmm. Probably Fujin the back dash, 5H the back dash. You wouldn't be able to jump per se. Probably hit you on your jump startup. 
So it's probably going to be tight enough to like stop jump startups, but like should be able to backdash at the very least if you don't want to deal with it and kind of force them to like play roulette. Mm. I think it just depends on how close he is too. So we get to know Hakobi. Anji moves forward while avoiding the opponent's attacks. The distance Anji travels increases the longer you hold the button down. If you parry a heavy attack with this, you Ah, okay, it stuns them. Wonder if you can actually like RC out of that. If you can RC out of your move, then it kinda makes a little moot. But then again, Anji can RC back. Or if it's cancelable in general. You can attack the opponent with the button down. Because she does a 5H and she's stunned there. That's enough time for him to hit five, uh, you know, close S. And that's actually a punish. So if you can challenge it, then that parry is kind of eh. Which I'd imagine you'd be able to challenge it. So we'll see. You can attack the opponent while they recover. But he gains that positional advantage again after Nagaha looking at that distance. If you parry so a heavy attack with this, slash you can heavy attack the opponent while they Fujin, an attack where Anji strikes forward. It can be followed up with various follow-up moves on hit or block. By holding the button, Anji yeah, he gets a spin attack. on that. Similar to so he gets. So yeah, I was right. So if he's doing H Fujin and he holds, it can be followed up with various follow-up moves on hit. An attack where Anji strikes forward. It can be Fujin. Oh, never mind. It's just one Fujin. Attack where Anji strikes forward. I it thought there was more than one. Various follow-up moves on hit or block. Okay, so they just made it one Fujin. Anji will move forward before attacking. Similar to Sui gets to know Hakobi, Anji can dodge incoming attacks when he's moving forward, holding the button down until the end. Of so the H button gives you the basically holding it gives you like the H version of old Fujin, and just pressing it just gives you regular Fujin, which is fine. Hmm. Having the spin and then to to dodge normals, and then on release you still get Fujin. I feel like raw Fujin in neutral, I think just jumping against Anji would probably be pretty good in general, just so you can keep avoiding that move because he doesn't have home in this game. To the move boosts its attack properties. Shin Ichichiki. But he's got the DP. To Fujin, where Anji jumps up and launches a projectile towards the ground. The startup may be slow, but it creates an opportunity to approach the opponent. So my guess is he'll probably try to rend the jump or just Fujin. He'll just Fujin spin and then Fujin. Mm. But if he does Fujin, in the, if he does spin first into Fujin, aka Fujin hold, you literally have to throw something out. If he's using it, if he's using it to get in, he might as well just use regular spin. If that's the case. But I feel like you'd probably be able to just bait out a lot of his stuff. I mean, he... <clears throat> yeah, it kind of has Biken's counter system. Can you RC a hit that was armored against? Can you burst? Uh, nah, you have to be getting hit in order to burst. So best case scenario, you RC it and then you burst. Um, hmm. I just feel like it's kind of like a lot of the same stuff. Like, they, they made his air fireball off Fujin like faster. And I feel like most of the players will be doing either one or two things. They're either gonna do fireball, either they're gonna do the uh, the Phantos, or they're gonna do the hop. Like, I'm sure Rin probably isn't safe on block if it is then that's okay i suppose he should have one safe option i guess off of fujin other than the projectile which i don't even think that's a safe either it's just fast so he's gonna have to condition you under pressure as usual uh he still looks like he has good buttons though opponent wants out try using this though but, but like this, to the this here with the challenge with the 5H, that button's too slow. 
I don't see any reason as to why after you block this, you try to challenge. I feel like you should just back up. Like just backdash him or walk away from the 5H. He's most likely going to be some kind of plus. How plus is the real question, but if you can just walk away from the 5H, it's fine. And you shouldn't, I feel like this is how it was even back in the day. You shouldn't challenge the fans after you block it. He lands really fast in this one, so it's kind of close to the slash, if I recall right. <clears throat> but like, there's no reason to challenge. Just back the fuck up. Better just back up than try to like take your turn back. Instead, just let him whiff if, you, if he intends to do that. If he intends to commit, then just punish him for whiffing. You know, especially if he's going to whiff a big button like that. Like, there's literally no reason for you to do what this, what they're showing you here, which is to return fire with a 5H from him doing fireball from Fujin. It doesn't make any sense. No, no reason to challenge. They're just showing if they try to press a button that he's probably plus. Or he is plus. Opponent wants out. Try using this against opponents who are watching for Nagiha or Reen. Isoku Tobi. A follow-up to Fujin where Anji leaps forward. Use this move to take the opponent by surprise when they are concentrated on blocking. So it's normally hop into throw, that's a pretty common option. But if he's going in for this, like Fujin into hop, like if you miss, if presuming that you IB the Fujin in the first place from a string, then you clearly go for like, hmm. And that's kind of where it comes in again, where you kind of throw, but it just depends. Like you can react to this, this one you can react to, but like it, it just, it, it just depends. Like a lot of his pressure is going to come from Fujin almost for certain. Like they will be throwing out Fujin after blocking a single thing. They'll be like, blah, blah, Fujin, blah, Fujin, blah, 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 Fujin, blah, Fujin, blah, 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 Fujin. And then it's like, all right, you blocked Fujin. Now you got to guess the follow-ups, which, you know, it's fine. That's always kind of been his game plan. Um, but yeah. Oh, it just feels like standard Anji stuff. Use this move to take the opponent by surprise when they are concentrated on blocking. Nagiha. A follow up to Fujin where Anji performs a low sweep with a small opening. It is a low attack that cannot be blocked while standing. Its quick startup allows it to combo off a hit from Fujin. Green. A follow up to Fuji, where Anji performs an overhead attack that knocks the opponent down on hit. I'm gonna I'm gonna probably die on that hill, but I'm pretty sure you IB that to throw. That's gonna be pretty much guaranteed, but you just gotta you would just have to deal with You have to deal with some of the other options. That's really it. And even then, you can still just 2k it, most likely. It probably still dies to lows. So. The opponent will not be able to block the move while crouching. You can keep your opponent guessing by following up the Fujin with either Nagiha while crouching. You can keep your opponent guessing by. Hmm. By following up the, opponent the rhythm will not be able of it. To block the move while crouching. Look at that rhythm from the 6H. Ah, oh, there's a delay. So you have to read that. Okay, that would be good. Will I be work if it doesn't remove blockstone? Uh, so the H follow up was thrown vol in the past, if I recall right too. But like, it's a different game, so I would imagine that would be a go-to option. <clears throat> Cause if it's still weak to if it's still weak to lows then it just it makes uh how to put it you know it's just one less option you have to go against it it's one it's one buff it's one good thing for anji and one less thing that you have under your belt to go go against but i wouldn't see why it wouldn't be why you wouldn't be able to throw it because i mean why not it's a new game because i mean throw punishes in this game were huge especially if you got 50 bar you gonna make uh, throw is already like eighty something damage, so throw RC into some stuff is probably gonna hurt. So, I'm just guessing. If you could throw it, good. If not, it's fine. Just hit him low still. 
And I, if I'm wrong, it could be Force Break version of Rin was like unthrowable. But I think part of the reason why it wasn't throwable before is because you were outside of range. More often than not when it came to the Rin follow-up. And yeah, IB removes Blackstone by one frame at the most. Which is why you're able to punish Hammerfall. Because you, you, you release the Blackstone enough to get a jab. Would IBFD give enough pushback to miss the overhead? Oh, absolutely. But the reason why I'm telling you to IB first is because you want to confirm it. You know, what I'm saying is you want to confirm your blocks, right? So for example, if it does 5k 2d fusion, right? You want to confirm your block with the first two and then go for it from there. If you IB FD the fujin, because like all his other options, they're not really going to yield too much of a reward because you can see the butterfly start up. And if he, if he goes for spin, you just back up or just, or you try to throw him. Now, of course, if he does hold Fujin, then that's the issue, right? So that's what I'm saying. Like, uh, I would say on the first go round, you would just show them that you're willing to IB and then you introduce IBFD as you continue or IBFD immediately. And then it's going to make them throw off their, they're going to try to throw off your IB timing with hold Fujin. You see what I'm saying? So it's not necessarily a bad thing for them to, to do that, but you know, there's nothing really, there's nothing to be afraid of at that stage, if that makes sense. Like if you didn't already confirm your, your block, then like, and I mean, it's, a, it's in a quick flash of a second, you're going to make this decision, right? But like, if you see the startup, if you see him spinning around, it's just like, all right, we out of there. You know, there's no reason for you to sit there and take that. That's why you would just hold up on it. The only real question is how good is Rin as an anti-air? Like if you neutral jump, Fujin? So let's say he does blah blah hold Fujin. Let's say you're holding up, right? Because you know he doesn't want to deal with your nonsense. You know, and he wants to try to call you out. If the jump, if you if you jump, if you neutral jump on it and the Rin follow-up is a good anti-air, then that becomes a little bit tricky. But I mean you can still just double jump on him, so it won't really matter that much. Um in that case. So But just thinking about it, like most of his options are all coming from Fujin once again. So it's like, you kind of just play around Fujin. You, you, you can try to challenge in some places, it seems, just at first glance. So, I don't know, I just feel like you just have to just consider what your options are. It's gonna be different for every character, like what you get. But generally speaking, like, unless we're just throwing out random Fujins, like, which I anticipate that happening, you know, you just don't want to give Anji any leeway with certain projectiles, right? And even if you do, like, you want to try to, like, make him feel it afterwards, you know? But the good thing about him is, uh, well, we'll, we'll continue on and I'll, I'll get, I'll get around oh. to it. An attack Anji performs while leaping upward. By holding the button, Anji will move forward before attacking. Similar to Suigetsu no Hakobi, Anji can dodge incoming attacks when he is moving forward. Holding the button down until the end of the move boosts its attack properties. This attack doesn't hit grounded opponents, so use it as an anti-air or in combos. Issei Ogi Sai. So I'm not even gonna worry about the supers too much, except for the counter super, but this this move is pure anti-air. So you don't really have to worry too much. Well, they kinda made it a two-in-one, right? It's like <laughs> they did it again. They keep doing this horizontal DP stuff with freaking Fujin. Or these like Ko is this new not quite Fujin anti-air type move. So it's like if I guard point you on the ground, I get to punish you. If you jump, then I just release in this anti-air. You know, pretty cool option. Pretty cool option. So it's kind of like the spin gets masked. You know, so his K spin is gonna end up being like, am I going for spin? Is it Ko? You know, so I think you might jump. Is it Fujin? So like, I feel like you don't have to play around the spin a lot, which is why I say like, it's kind of, it might be okay to just backdash in some cases. Um, if it's, if this move is just pure on anti-air, then, you know, currently right now, there's no air unblockables. So the only punishment you get is you get to lose your positioning, but you go back to neutral, you know, with the way they currently have it. And since there's more landing recovery on the air blocks, that still allows him to kind of, actually, that won't really matter nearly as much. 
He probably still has his air options because I saw at the end of a combo it seems like he can like so use it as an anti do falling or kick. So he'll still have his air his aerial options. You know, he's still late air dash, it seems. If he's able to do late kick like that, he should probably still be able to air dash. Um at that point. Mm, that will help him get in and kind of hold on to his pressure. But I don't think it could have been anything you couldn't challenge or still. You'll basically what I'm saying is you'll just end up losing real estate, which is okay. Like, you didn't take any damage. You took some risk. You, like you took some risk build. If barring if you didn't FD it. And it's to deal with the the grounded recovery penalty, which is not nearly as bad. So he'll he'll be able to get back in your face, but that's not. I don't think he'll gain that much advantage, so it just depends. I'll have to just look at it whenever it comes out. But uh, mm, he's looking he's looking pretty good now. I'm um, looking at like the kit and thinking about how the kit's gonna work in terms of pressure. Like I said, I feel like it's it's fusion. Like it's just the spin as a whole. Like that's just gonna be the character. Cause coming back to uh, here. Anji moves forward while avoiding the opponent's attacks. The distance Anji travels increases the longer you hold the button down. If you parry a heavy attack with this, you can it. Well, like, like I said, a heavy attack. So that means like whatever the other attacks are, you're not you might not be able to get something major off of that. And even then, I don't even know what his guard points are. If he has any other guard points on his normals, they haven't mentioned anything about that. If anything, it sounds like his guard points are all attached to his special moves, which actually changes a lot of Anji's dynamic a lot, actually. Like you can't just be throwing out, you know, guard pointed normals just to play the game. Not that that's a bad thing. I mean, that's always been his thing, but they haven't really said anything about it. And I'm not sure yet if that's even going to be a thing. But like I said, that that spin startup, I feel like is what's going to, you know, attacking. similar to Suzuki that's going to be what it is. Anji can dodge. Anji will move forward before attacking. Similar to Suigetsu no Hakobi, Anji can dodge incoming attacks when he's moving forward. Holding the button down until the end of the move boosts its attack properties. Shin Ichichiki. So yeah. Mm. He seems like he's gonna be alright. But I feel like it's not something that... A follow -up to Fuji it, it's hard to say if he's gonna be OD or not. Towards the, ground. the startup may be slow. But it creates an opportunity to approach the opponent once out. Try using. I feel like this is like the best thing about him. Nagiha or Rin. Isokutobi. Like that fireball. Like the fan fireball is gonna be. Use this move to take the opponent by surprise when they are concentrated on blocking. Nagiha. A follow up to Fuji. But if um. Sweep with a small opening. It is a low attack. If he retains the throw into Butterfly like we saw in the initial trailer for him, that's going to make his throw game super potent. Because he's going to be throwing you all day into freaking Butterfly. Which I can see that also being a big thing about his gameplay, like trying to fish for throws, trying to scare you up, you know, trick you up enough to like make you to freeze up for throws and whatever. So, mm, he seems like it's going to be okay. I just don't see an overhead for him yet. Cannot be blocked while standing. It's like they haven't showed whether or not he has an overhead. Like I know he has an overhead from Fujin, but like they don't show him having a command normal overhead like he had in previous games. So it makes me wonder at the uh, effectiveness of the butterfly. To be honest. Mm. Because you want the you want the butterfly to hit because you you know more often than not you're gonna try to go for the mix up. So, but it seems like if he has an overhead, it's just gonna be strike throw. Yeah, the strategy guys don't show normals. If he has an overhead, then that's great. If not, then it's just a strike throw mix up with the fireball attached to it. You know, you choose whether or not you're gonna attack. But his throw will be po it will, will be potent because it's gonna put you back in the same situation again. So I can see his throw game being that strong. Do you think Butterfly is just there to for pace control as opposed to combo potential? 
Uh, I think it's there for both. I mean, you want the butterfly strictly because, like, like for example, I could see after certain knockdowns, like you get a tech roll situation, you might even like for him. It looks like he'll have pretty good meterless damage, you know. And that's a lot of the character characters in the game anyway, right? But like setting it up from butterfly seems like it'd be pretty good, you know, if you're able to get an overhead or like a low hit into you know shenanigans, because the butterfly is gonna hit off the whatever you you know link off of and then boom boom you know you're gonna go into fujin into nagiha or fujin into throw fujin into hop throw fujin into a shenanigan it's just fujin you know everything's just gonna go into fujin everything's gonna branch from fujin in general so mm, it's uh i think he'll be fine though like he's gonna be able to control a lot of like the tempo on the strength of him being able to get a good consistent meaty from his knockdowns that's something a lot of characters lack even milia currently in the previous beta didn't have sweep in the you know disc meanwhile this guy does have it so it's it's something to be concerned about just on the strength of that just on the strength of it being more consistent that's it you know milia still has a knockdown from sweep in the you know shenanigans but like it's not as crispy so and even even still with this his butterfly isn't as butterfly leaves still room for you to challenge you know so it's going to be a guessing game on that part too because if you have an uppercut or if you don't want to deal with it and you like you know yellow rc him off of you like or guard cancel him off of you you know so i feel like from a systematic standpoint guard cancels are going to probably give him some issues in the sense that he has to like return to neutral or like the situation returns a neutral no matter how close he is, right? So if you, what you want to do also is you're not going to, you don't want to guard cancel the butterfly right away because I'm assuming it's going to be just like Naga Ryuki, where if you guard cancel too early on his shadow clone, you just get popped by the shadow clone. So he's good against guard cancel, but you have to be good at calling it out, you know? So. Like it's like each each character in the game is forcing you to be good at something, like a, like another system mechanic, if that makes sense. Like Anji, like everyone in the game naturally like the guard cancel is really good actually, especially in the air, which I think is another reason why they d did the thing with the air recovery. Now that I think about it, I'm gonna I, I swear I can't wait to mess with this, but um you know, then knowing that it's kind of it's kind of huge. Back as RC drift away is potent defensively, but it's 50 bar. Yeah. Back dash RC drift is gonna be good against him as well. That's true. Like, see, I'm thinking already how to defensively deal with him. Like, I'm I'm seeing his pressure already and just thinking to myself how we can stop all this. What's going on, my brother? I see you, big dog. Or IBFD on wake up. I think IBFD is a great choice. Uh, I just don't know how IBFD interacts with projectiles. I don't know if you still get the push back, uh, push back on the projectile. I have to go back and look at the systems video again just to be certain. But um, if you do, then that kind of negates butterfly pressure. But that's gonna take you know some time. Um, but definitely back dash drifts is good. It's gonna it's an, it's an expensive escape, but it's an escape no less. Uh. I think even still, if you IB Butterfly, that's one extra frame to do something. Which also gives you the ability to backdash, delay, drift, RC. Which isn't too bad. Providing that they don't swing at you, obviously. If they swing at you, then that that's moot. But backdash, drift, drift back, RC is going to be strong. Um, I don't know. There's a lot to look at. There's a lot to unpack in dealing with him. I'll be looking at that stuff... Definitely day one. Just to understand like what to deal with right away. Cause he's gonna get played quite a bit. You know I'm not that much concerned about because their kit's about the same. But I'll still lab it, but he's gonna be the one I wanna be able to just sit here and really iron out. Uh but Yeah man, from a defensive standpoint, I just see like IBFD doing really good against him. And I feel that way with Chip too, right? Like IBFD against Chip Wreckers is going to be pretty scary. Which is why I feel like Alpha Blade is like... See, when we when we start talking like meta things, you start thinking about the system, 
oh man things things begin to change when you start thinking about how people are going to utilize some of the tools i think one of the biggest reasons why chip is going to be mad good is because he completely shits on ibfd because he throws off your timings because he has a delayed cross up of course you could ib in this and like you can delay yourself into ib into pressing a button but he's crossing you up and k off is really fast and you just adjust it to people's timing if they ib if they if they try to ib mash like ibfd mash they have to do the ib first they have to do ibfd which they they're still that's going to eat frames and they can't press a button immediately you know they have to come out of the fd in order to press a button so that makes alpha really strong actually now i think about it which i man thinking about it now holy crap and I can move this into a whole other tangent. I feel like I'm kind of done with Anji in a sense, but when you start really thinking about how IBFD works, can't you be foreseeing people are going to call Anji OD and prepping in advance for the counter? Oh, already, you already know. Yeah, man. Like, I'm already seeing it in my head how it's going to play out. Like, one of the reasons why he's going to be good is because he's going to be somewhat anti IBFD because of Fujin Hop. Because of hop, that like that changes a lot of how you know you're gonna want to deal with his his pressure. Should come back here, what's it? Iso, Isoku Tobi. Okay, we'll call it Iso for short, right? So Fujin into Iso is gonna be good. But like when you think about things, right? If he if you IBFD the Fujin, you push him out, he does Iso, he's putting himself at risk. Because you're already back to neutral. So if he hops, if he puts himself at risk, if he's not paying attention, if he's autopiloting, then he puts himself at risk and you can most likely punish him for hop. So that's why he's going to have to use spin. But I feel like that's also going to be his demise. Because like I said, if he's going into spin, you can just neutral jump. Like he neutral jump if he goes for, if he does fusion, right? So if he does spin while fusion, then he just neutral jump. Because he's just going to go past you. And if he commits to an option, that's counter hit state. And that's burst city. So it's a two for one, right? You get you get an escape, hypothetically speaking. You hit him, he bursts. That's free damage afterwards on the burst bait. It's GG at that point. Which, if you hit him with a jump cancelable normal, I need to double check that. But yeah, it should actually be the same. Hit him with a jump cancelable normal, I be that, and then land and then kill him. He lost a, he lost a burst and positioning. Off the strength of him throwing out Fujin on a, on a block string from spin. But then again, like I said, if he does, you know, the, the P version, I, I guess if you don't press anything, you're okay. But I feel like that's his, that's one of his major answers to stop you. Because everything else is too slow. So like, while I think he'll die to hub back, but it's it's going to be a big time guessing game. I feel like a big thing about him is holding on to meter to make sure he can't play his game. And using it defensively against him. Because like, you don't, in essence, obviously you'd want to have the damage on him, right? But like... If you have meter to defensively thwart what he wants to do, I feel like your goal, just like every time, you know, try to get the positive bonus early and keep him, like, keep him away from, you need to keep him away from positive bonus because his wall carry and wall break seems really potent. So if you can keep him away from doing that, he won't have the meter for the shenanigans. And that's for a lot of characters, right? But just thinking, speaking on him in general, right? Like his, his options are going to be expanded with RC and drift, right? So Fujin into drift is going to be scary. Like his throw game, I'm, I'm calling it now. His throw game is going to be good. Like no question. His throw game has always been good, but I, I imagine it being even better now because he gets thrown into some kind of meaty setup. You know, um, I question whether or not you can take the hit and be able to move away, but it depends on how much hit stun the butterfly has. If the butterfly has too much hit stun, then yeah, you might not be able to do that because he could probably do butterfly. Actually, nah, you might not be able to because he can move afterwards. Let me double check that. That parry their attacks. Take advantage yeah. Attacks. So wait, that could be his overhead action. I'll think about it. Take advantage of his unique offense and control the pace of the map. Moves that parry their attacks. Take advantage of opponent using moves that parry their attack. But right here, you can see already. Hold on, let me come back. Two K two D. There's the Fujin. I mean, there's the uh, the butterfly and then the FD, right? He can move in, but he moved in from afar. 
which means he could probably use this normal at distance. He can probably use this normal at range. So probably about here. You don't even need to run. You can probably just do whatever that move is right there and it's probably overhead. So you block. Oh, okay, I see. I see how it works. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, I've been analyzing this for a little bit now. Um, so the initial block has that there, and then boom, he gets that. So he technically speaking, he can't do P. He can't do two P two K. He has to commit to one. He has to commit to the high or the low. So if that move right there is the overhead, he has to commit to one or the other. So that's not so bad. That's that's manageable. He doesn't get more than one chance to mix you up. He only gets one good chance. So it's not necessarily that bad. But he's going to be looping a lot of the same stuff. Because if that hits like that, then Butterfly hits. And then he gets to do the rest of it, right? But my, my assumption is if he's able to loop that, he's not going to get that much damage. That's my guess. But I'm also seeing if he does 2K, you can probably prep yourself. No, he can do 2K6H. So that could be problematic. But if he does 2K2D, you can probably block the 2K IB, the 2D, and then since you free up the block stun, I don't know if you'll be able to challenge Fujin like that, but maybe you'll be able to throw because the 2D won't have any pushback, right? So if Fujin, if there's enough time, you might be able to throw Fujin. Might be a risky option, but something to test. They still have air dash option after the shin. Phantos, uh, it doesn't look like it. It just looks like he recovers really fast. I haven't seen any, I haven't seen anything that suggests that yet. But if he doesn't have air options off of this, it's still pretty plus. Like that joint is mad. It looks like it's pretty plus. But I don't like you can see his recovery like off rip. Like he's already landed into 5H and she's still blocking. So he's definitely plus. <clears throat> it's like a boxing with drain meter quickly on the opponent. The opponent's often that's in the string. Nah. Honestly, I think your best bet against Anji is to IB him. Get the meter so you can have, you know, the meter bonus against him. Yeah, he used to have being able to move off of it in the older games for sure. He might be able to still do it. We just haven't seen it yet. So I think at the, in the grand scheme of things, you just have to take your time with him. I don't think you want to FD him. You, the reason why you don't want to FD him is because you want meter. The IB timing is rough. Hey, I'm not saying it's not. But I feel like, you know, once you get used to it, it's not going to be that bad. You're training yourself. Because like I said, the biggest thing that I've learned about IB and what I preach to everyone is to... You want to... You want to secure your block first before you go for the IB. Because if he does 2K, right, he has like a few options from the 2K, right? So he can Fujin, which is a big gap. He can 2D, which is definitely a tight string. And he can 6H, which is the, the command normal. He could probably go for his overhead as well, but we'll see. Um, I would imagine so, right? Go low high. You know, he's not going to go high to low. So if you confirm your, if you confirm your guard initially, then from the first guard that's confirmed, then you want to decide whether or not it's going to be FD or FDIB. You know, this way you can push him away or gain the extra, you know, reduce his pushback to blow up the next option, which I think throw would probably be a good a good way to stop. You know what I'm saying? Uh, if he does 2D, if he does 2K 2D in the Fujin, I'm assuming that is a punish because throws are like two or three frames right now, right? They're still pretty fast. So, and throw punishes are like the fastest punish unless you have a three frame. And I think the only three frame move in the game still is chip. Correct me if I'm wrong. There might be a few others who have three framers. I would imagine Eno might have a three frame in this game. She had a four frame before. It was 5P. So, you know, you just gotta, you just have to think about it. Just, I'm, I'm theory fighting with the system. You know, I'm sure that there's something that can be done. It's just what? You know, I'm almost... 99.9% .9 confident that 2k confirmed guard into instant block his 2d into fujin i'm pretty sure there's gonna be it's it's a one frame it, it reduces your block by at least one frame so if it's at least by one frame then that's room for an uppercut so that means you could break that shit up but of course he could do spin and spin can call out your dp 
See, that's that's where the mix-up's gonna come. Like, is it gonna do spin in the Fujin? Is it just straight spin in general? Which is why I'm, I'm very much so curious how this is gonna pan out. So it really just depends on the blocks done between IB into this in, into Fujin. But I'm very confident. More often than not, they're gonna go 2K 2D Fujin into like all right something. 2K 2D Fujin in the fan. 2K 2D Fujin hop. 2K 6H Fujin and back to the same string. You know we're gonna be playing that game for a while. And I mean it's still like these are still the same options he was doing before. It's just you don't have as many Gatlings to go through. You literally just press one less button for him. <laughs> so got super jump. I haven't seen too much in the regards to like how a super jump works in this game. So that's going to be something to test out too. Other than that, I just feel like he's a character that's going to be built around calling out. You know, because to be honest with you, he, he presses literally one less button in his string. You know that, right? Like this, he used to do 5k close slash sweet Fujin. That was his thing. You know, now you just press 5k 2d. <laughs> you literally just press one less button. Before you just confirm the first two hits. Now you got to confirm the first hit. This is why I say single hit confirming even on guard is important. Like, it works It works in reverse, right? Single hit confirming is, all right, I'm going to combo confirm, right? Now it's like, I'm going to block confirm into like an IB or an IBFD to like push him away. Because I mean, I'm going to guess that the timing for 2K2D and 2K6H might be the same. If they're the same, then there's room. And I know it's mad theory crafting, like, who's going to block the first hit and then IB the other one? I mean, no one expected Daigo to parry freaking Justin Super back at EVO, right? But he did. So, I mean, if you have it down and you know those options, she's not going to get away with that. You know, you got to show the option. Yeah, the bait is Thursday. You got to be able to show the option. You have to be able to show that you know how to do that. So I feel like that's where a lot of things are going to come into play. Could be 2K spin. I don't know. I feel like it's just, he's just going to spend a lot of time like in the in the long haul. Like not not this beta. Hear me out. Everything I'm telling you about is going to be down the line. This isn't for this beta. Like some of it will be, but not all of it. Like the meta for the character and how it's going to work is probably going to be what I'm saying down the line. Like some of this is going to be surface level stuff that they'll be doing. But like six months from now, when the game fully comes out and like we're already like past Evo and shit like that by December, you start seeing all the options I'm talking about. People do. Almost for sure. Almost for sure. Yeah, I just feel like uh, he's definitely going to be good. I can't really say how good. I don't want to sit here and tell you he's going to be mid-tier or top-tier. What I will say is his throw game is going to be good and his whiff punishment game is going to be really good. Because that's kind of always been Anji's thing. Like, Anji's movement and whiff punishment is pretty solid. Like, what I'm very confident of for sure, though, there will be lots of Fujin spam. They'll be throwing out a lot of Fujin in neutral. So I feel like you just got to treat... Like, I'm telling you, the fact that he doesn't have his air command grab, that changes a lot of the, the uh, dynamic. This this changes this like this changes the landscape on how he deals with, you know, jumps. You know. Uh, Blue Roman cancels. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's definitely uh, that's something I'm concerned about too. Like, what's up, Agni? I feel like this character is gonna be vastly autopilot by most people. I mean, to be honest with you, Anji is somewhat autopilot, you know. But it's not so much autopilot as it is to just trying to call shit out. Like in older games, like a lot of Anji players spend. Mad time trying to just guard point you and try to call you out. They do play footsies with you, of course, but like more often than not, it's like I'm gonna stick out this guard point normal. You know, if you get hit by this, I'm off selecting into the good ass normal, or I'm getting I'm off, I'm I'm mashing the good follow up that gives me good damage or knockdown, which is normally the P follow up. You know, that's really what it's gonna be. You know, he's always been like that. And like I said, in this game, since Anji doesn't have ohm, this changes like literally changes the landscape. He has no air throw. He has to use normal air throw. So his ability to blow up, up back now isn't really prevalent outside of Fujin in the, in the Nagiha. And I guess Rin. 
But like I said, it's like a lot of his good stuff is going to be locked behind Fujin. So like the fact he doesn't have Ohm is like, oh no. Your way to stop me from jumping now is forcefully air throwing me? Mm -mm. Like I'm not going to... Like, I won't say he's going to die to up back. That's not what I'm saying. But like jumping, like neutral jumping against him in general is going to be really good. But again, I need to see his normals. I don't. I haven't seen his normals yet to really, really make a good assessment. Because if he still has like six, six S, where he like does this number here and it's like really good anti air, you know, anti guard points or whatever, like that, that could be tough. You wonder if he still has a comboable air throw. I mean, he doesn't have own. <laughs> Best case scenario, he gets five K fusion and stuff. I don't know. Even if he doesn't have it, if he gets a knockdown and a butterfly, that's just as good. It don't always gotta be a combo, man. I air throw a chip. What do I get? I get to chase you down again, dog. <laughs> Not very many people, from what I can see, have a comboable air throw. Like combo afterwards after air throw doesn't seem like that's much of a thing. Oh, that's right, and it took away orb too. So he lost ohm and he lost orb. So he lost his anti air grab and he lost his TK overhead, which. Honestly, it's not really that bad. Like, he's still gonna be trying to mix you off of throws and freaking sweep Fujin. Like, it's gonna be sweep butterfly, throw. It's gonna be sweep butterfly, throw butterfly. Period. He might even get air throwing the butterfly. Which, if he if he if he gets those if he gets two throws into it, that's already good in itself. You know, maybe one throw might be meatier than the other. Yeah, he may not need those things honestly. I feel like he's gonna do. I feel like he's gonna do fine. His ground game has always been good. You know, they just weakened his anti-air game. His 5P is probably still gonna be anti-air, so that's good. Uh, but in general, like right now, from what I'm seeing, like he's just gonna be a ground beast. But again, he'll be making reads. Yeah, his normals are still gonna be beast mode. I don't. I don't see anything that suggests that he's bad. That's for sure. He definitely looks good. Like as one of the last characters coming into the game for the for the base roster, he seems pretty good. You know, but like I said, everything that I'm speaking on looks like it's this is all for the long haul. This is for the grand scheme of things. You know, obviously things are gonna change and they're gonna find more strategies around it. But I'm very confident when I say that like keeping him away from meter is gonna be pretty important. Because the thing is when he has meter, and just like anyone else, right? He'll be able to take that unsafe option and make it safe. So you wanna deny him positive bonus i feel like that's going to be a big time strategy for a lot of players in general just trying to deny your opponent positive bonus and i think he'll be one of the characters you just don't want to have it same with like kai there's a few characters who i have on my list i mean it's every character right you don't want them but like when you start considering what characters options are in neutral you don't want them you don't want those characters who have those really good neutral options to have access to meter without having to earn it without a positive bonus that makes sense like, if they IB and they get the extra meter, okay, cool. But, like, if they break the wall, then you're going to have to deal with a lot of nonsense post-wall break. Because you already go back to round start, right? So, while you get to play the RPS again, they still have meter to take a risk. And you might be in a deficit. And if you take the risk, et cetera, et cetera, you know where this goes. You know where this is going. Yeah. Honestly, he's playing Strive pretty well. It, it literally looks like he's just meant to call you out on the ground. Alright, that's it. He's always been calling. He's always been a call out character, but like even more so now than ever.